Good day, everyone, and welcome to Home at the Hollow. My name is Glennis, and welcome to my kitchen. Thank y'all so, so much for joining me today. Uh, today's recipe, I have, it's been just a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and I had a subscriber ask me for a pumpkin pie recipe, and I couldn't decide. I did a couple. Um, that will be coming up soon during the season, but from a simple pumpkin pie request spawned another recipe. Now this, I have been making this for many, many years. This is my, and it is in my cookbook, but it is my butternut hominy stew. I just, <laughs> I just dished this up and I know this is delicious. This is probably, and I say this every single time, I think this is the best batch I've ever made, but I've got my red peppers, my garden fresh red peppers. I'm going to just top this with, and if that's not your thing, that's okay too. I do have a little bit of cream. I'm going to add just, just a little bit of cream, just a little. And I do have, I did have some, or do have some tortilla chips. I just kind of gave them a crush. Um, because with this particular recipe, this is a variation of the one in the cookbook. So with the spices that is in this one, red pepper and crushed tortilla chips are absolutely perfect. But let's have a good look at this. And um, I will spoon this up for you to see. This is really a hearty very, very healthy, very low fat, very healthy, hearty soup. And it's so easy. If you can use a slow cooker and a knife, then I think you got it. But um, I hope that everyone gives this a try. And without further ado, butternut hominy stew. I'm starting off with a two pound, a roughly two pound butternut squash from the garden. I think it's a little over two pounds, but that's okay. I have totally soaked a kitchen towel. I'm going to put it under my cutting board, and that's just to keep anything from moving. We don't, these are, these can be a challenge to cut. Now, this is one way, this is one way of roasting a squash. And certainly, uh, it's not the only way, but this is one way of doing it. Whoops, and there he goes. <laughs> and all you have to do from here is to seed this and turn it on a baking sheet and roast it 425 until they, you know, until they're fork tender. You definitely want them fork tender if you want to drizzle a little bit of olive oil on them. That's awesome too. And this is just nothing but good, wonderful squash. But what I'm going to do, because uh, although this is airing in October, it's still a little bit warm here. I'm going to put mine in the slow cooker, slow cooker, <laughs> overnight. Uh, you can put them in a slow cooker hole if you want to. And I'm not really sure this is, uh, I've got a whole bunch more. <laughs> so for the next uh, week, I'm going to be using a lot of uh, butternut squash. I'm, I think I'm going to, there, well, there's no thinking, I'm going to be making my butternut hominy stew. And it's, it's one of those where when she brings out the stock pot, you're going to have a lot of stew or soup. But um, yeah, if you want to just roast it in the oven, in the slow cooker, I'm going to turn this on when I go to bed. And in the morning, it will be ready. And all I'll have to do is scoop it out. And I'll film that at that time. And really, all you have to do, even though you can't really see the seeds here, just give it a good round. Give it a go. And get these seeds out. And give it a good cleaning. 
because you don't want anything, you know, kind of stringy in your pie or your soup or your stew. You don't want anything like that. And that'll be a nice aroma to wake up to these. And there you go. It's just that easy. Like I said, I'm gonna, I've got this slow cooker and I've got another slow cooker over on the stove. And I'm gonna let, like I said, I'm gonna let these probably about six hours on high, I think, because on low, I just don't think that's gonna work very well. But you know, you know your slow cooker better than I do. I'm up early this morning. I've already had some coffee, but um, this was on high for six hours last night. Actually, both of my slow cookers were, and I brought some out. I have been, and this is what it's going to look like. And really, it's, you know, really super, super simple, super easy. Uh, I love pieces like this because, let's see if I can slide it. It should just, I think, I'm hoping that you can see. It should just pull and scoop right out of there. Just like that. And you want to... What I'm going to do, since I cooked virtually, not all, <laughs> virtually all of the squash that I had, I'm going to fill this up to a healthy three cups. Um, and I'll start on the pie. I'm going to make a couple of other things, too. But for this video, it's going to be just a pie. But this is going to be... This is... Really, this is my lazy way of dealing with butternut squash because my hands are getting older <laughs> and they don't have the strength that they used to to, you know, to, to cut these like and peel these and then to cube it and then to oven roast it. No, that's just not, that's not going to happen. I mean, I could, and I have before, or if you have the luxury of, you know, finding a store that already has um, a couple of pounds of butternut squash already cubed, then just, you know, throw it in the oven, roast it. But, it, you know, the thing about doing it in an oven, it gets away from you. It has, it's gotten away from me before too. And you know, it'll be like overcooked and browned in certain spots. And that's not really what you want. That's not what I want for any of my dishes, for, for either the pies or the soups that I make with this. That's just not really what I want. And I, that's a pretty good three cups. And I've got, you know, a few little pieces like this. And there we go. And there you go. You know, overnight in the slow cooker, it's just that easy. I'm gonna be making a variation of my butternut hominy stew from my cookbook. If you have my cookbook, well, thank you. And if you don't, then I'll be happy to send one your way. But I just put a, a little bit of olive oil in my pan. I've got about two thirds, three quarters of a cup of diced chopped onion. I've got two cloves of fresh garlic already, you know, sliced and diced and chopped up. And, you know, this is one of those recipes where you don't have to worry about your, your knife cuts on this because this is all going to get pureed into the soup anyway. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook this until my onions are, you know, a little translucent and tender, probably, you know, four or five minutes. We've got a good cook on the onion and the garlic. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, this is about, whoo, <laughs> I'm going to add about a teaspoon and a half of ground cumin. I'm going to let this brown a little bit. I'm going to add probably about a tablespoon of butter. And, you know, get this, this cumin going. Going to add about uh, a tablespoon <laughs> of all purpose flour, and we are making a roux. You definitely want to make sure that your flour is cooked. You can't just put flour in and everything else on top of it. It does need to be cooked. And I think I'm looking brown and luscious. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit, a little bit being a half a teaspoon of salt and pepper. And this is one of those stew soups that you kind of have to taste along the way because half a teaspoon for this is really not a lot, but it's a good start. And that's looking so good. And this is the rest of the, the butternut squash. Oh, there it goes. That is roughly almost three pounds of cooked butternut squash. Just dip that in there. Three cups of beef stock. And I'm going to give this a good stir. You know, I say three cups, um, and it really depends on, you know, how much squash that you're putting in there. And see, I can, I can see three cups for this is a bare minimum, but I want to let this get you know, a good cook on, <laughs> a, I guess I should say a low simmer, and I'm going to just let this cook for probably about a half an hour. I do have my hominy standing by, but we don't want to add that just yet, because once I get a good simmer on this, I'm going to bring over my immersion blender, blend it, smooth it out, get it really smoothed out, and then we'll add the hominy. I'm at the end of my half an hour, and it still looks just, you know, kind of, I'm hoping that y'all can see, it just looks kind of lumpy and bumpy. I'm going to just bring out my immersion blender. I adore it. And I'm just going to carry on. I'm not going to bore you guys with this, but I'm going to carry on until the, it's the consistency that I expect to see. So my immersion blender did a wonderful, wonderful job. There's, there's, um, there's really not a problem if you have a few, um, you know, chunks left over. You just don't want the whole thing to be chunky. Now, what I've done is I still have a little bit more beef broth here. And actually, I a container like this is six cups. So I'm going to add mm, probably, what, maybe another cup? Maybe. Maybe another cup. And let's give this a stir because I, I I want it to bring it to the consistency that I anticipate where I'm going to actually sit and have a cup of this or a bowl <laughs> or two bowls. It's, it's so, so good and it's so, so healthy. Now, so for me, just, just me, this is just a little too thick. 
course, I wasn't shy about putting uh, <laughs> the butternut squash in it either because this soup stew, however you serve this, freezes very, very well, very well. This has been one of my go-tos for years now. Um, I have a lot of success in growing butternut squash. And, you know, as you, I, that will be coming up. I'm going to add the whole thing. So that's six cups of chicken stock, uh, beef stock. Now, if you have just chicken stock, that's totally fine. Or vegetable, that's fine too. But now, isn't that, now that moves a lot, lot better. I think that y'all can see. I wouldn't mind eating that, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hominy. I, I decided on golden hominy. They had white golden hominy and white hominy. I thought, well, you yeah. know. And that was just a 15 ounce can. Now I added my hominy and I'm looking at it and I've, I've made a pretty good, <laughs> pretty good bit of soup here. And I don't think that's going to be enough. So I've opened another can. And this time I've just got just whole, whole kernel corn. And I think that's going to be just fine. And like I said, at this point, you can take this and freeze it. You know, if you want to divide it up and freeze it. Or if you want to put it in a slow cooker, that would be good too. But certainly... I mean, I've got mine on like really medium low and, you know, as long as it's heated thoroughly, it's cooked. So you could have it really as quickly as within an hour if you wanted to. Um, but I'm going to just cover this and I'm going to let it just simmer until I'm ready for it because it's, I know that this is going to be delicious. I probably will fine dice a, I think I have a red pepper ready from the garden, and I'm going to dice a red pepper. That'll make it really, really pretty. And if, if you want, now you can eat it just like this. If you want, you can add um, about a cup of milk, heavy cream, whatever it is that you have, if you want to if you want it to be a little more decadent. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do today. I know it's going to taste good no matter what. And there's a, a, you know, a lot, a lot of people that like it creamy and they want cream in it. Um, but for me, this is a low calorie, low fat alternative and really delicious. But we will come back and do a taste test in just a wee bit.